Danielle, I don't know if it's just on my end, but your video is frozen for me, so I can't see your beautiful face. You didn't see my mustard expression? Um, is it frozen on that? It froze It froze after that. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today is going to be a super fun episode as we're doing a little bit of a collaboration with Team T-Dub and Salt Stick. So from the Team T-Dub side of things, we have Danielle Lau. Thank you for joining us. Danielle is is AKA the little giant, AKA D Lau, AKA a pro player, also two time All American at USC and all around badass. So thanks, Danielle, for joining. Thanks, Michelle. This is going to be fun. Yes. And then from Salt Stick, we have Jess Sarah. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Your last name? You are. Good job. Awesome. <laughs> I'm notorious for mispronouncing everything. Um, and you are from Salt Stick, but also from what I hear, pretty badass in the professional cycling world. So I just consulted with someone who is also a big cycler, and he was like, yeah, she's badass. <laughs> oh, oh, no. This is my first ever tennis podcast. Well, let's just put it that way. <laughs> hey, we love a little cross collab. I don't know if you know much about Sports Warehouse, but we have a lot of different sports here. So we kind of play off of each other. And then Art Cyclery used to be a part of our family. And now they're just down the street. So we're still very close to some cyclers in our world. <laughs> awesome. Yay. Okay. So before we get into more specifics, I wanted to start with an icebreaker because those are always fun. And I wanted to ask if you guys have, and we're obviously going to talk about hydration. I don't even know if I said that. We're talking about hydration, the importance of hydration. But I wanted to hear if you guys have any memorable, like worst cramping experiences, whether it was on the court, in a match, in a competition, on the road, at home during practice, you guys go. Danielle, anything that comes to mind? Um, the one that comes to mind, and it's related to Salt Stick too. I was in Sumter, South Carolina in the heat of summer. Um, I don't know how many years it was, but I had just finished an intense match and I was stretching outside and I was doing like my hamstring stretch and I legit got stuck because I just started to cramp. And so I like, I was like grandma like speed I like leaned back for my bag and I like reached for the bottle of like salt stick and I took like I took like two pills like just on the spot right there and I just like laid down and tried not to stress and like maybe 10 minutes later I was able to like stretch my hamstring but like <laughs> my goodness I was just like oh my gosh I'm gonna have to have someone like lift me to the car <laughs> If I like, if I don't get a hold of this bottle right now. So, I mean, just, be, you know, we're, we're talking about salt stick and stuff. So like, that was the first story that came to mind. <laughs> nice. So, What's your story, Joss? I'm sure you've had a few moments. Yeah. So my story is in my first ever big professional stage race. So a stage race is like a multi-day format in cycling. Um, I was still an amateur trying to get a professional contract and I had made the selection on the last day with a group of 10. So I'm like, okay, I have it made, but I was so nervous the whole day. And this was before I knew about salt stick that the only thing I had to eat with electrolytes was gels, like gel after gel, after gel, after gel. And I was so nervous. I was like, I can't cramp. It was super hot. And so I was just eating all these gels and slowly my stomach started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> <laughs> because it was just like sugar bomb. And I ended up cramping anyway. Oh, and no. the final of this race is a descent back into town into the finish line. And I just remember being in the back of this group, just stretching my hamstring. I don't know why. Is it always <laughs> hamstrings? I don't know. <laughs> and I was just like, I can't even pedal. This is horrible. Oh my gosh. So, oh, that's, yeah. Did you uh, get your pro status? Or was that? I did. Okay, good. I did. I, I got my pro contract despite the hamstring cramp. <laughs> Thank goodness. I know. And it does always seem like it's hamstring or calf for me. Hamstring or calf. And like, I personally have had, this was several years ago before I was at Tennis Warehouse, but I had like a, a small calf tear. And I'm pretty sure it was because I was Ooh. dehydrated. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so have you had the the hand before? No, you haven't had the hand. Or the foot? 
the foot. Uh, the, the foot. The foot. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had the hand like while I'm like reaching for something, like I'm cramping like Ugh. on like a lower extremity and I'm like reaching for something with the hand and all of a sudden like that one like right here. And you can't even do oh. anything. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And it's like the foot's the middle of the night one too. Like you're you wake up yeah, and you're like, like ah! <laughs> my foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, dang. Okay. Well, before we get into more of our stories and horrible dehydration problems, Jess, can you give us a little bit of background on what you do with Salt Stick, what your role is, and what your kind of like day-to-day operations looks like? Yeah. So my background, I have a master's in exercise physiology. I'm actually the founder of JoJ Bar, which is a real food energy bar and a sister brand to Salt Stick. So when JoJ was acquired by our parent brand, Elite Active Nutrition, Salt Stick and I became related. Nice. (laughs) And I became the vice president of product development and community development. So I, it's a multifaceted, uh, position and I work across all of the brands on innovation and specifically on the community side with athletes and events and um, just kind of bringing together a stronger community of diverse people to our brands. So that's that's the best summary I can give. I love that. No, that's great. And then Danielle, tell us where you're at right now with your career. Where are you right now currently in the season and all that? Yeah, so um, I turned pro when I was uh, like straight out of college. That was like in 2013, I believe. I still have to like count back to see how long I've been doing this. It's almost been like 10 years. So I've been on the pro tour for, for 10 years. Um, right now we're reaching kind of like, you know, the last stretch of the season. Normally we'll wrap up our season around... I would say like late October, early November. So right now we're in like the last stretch. People are a little bit banged up at this point of the year. You know, we've (laughs) had a long season. And and yeah, just trying to get whatever tournaments in right now in order to get some points and hopefully qualify for Australian Open, which is the first slam of uh, the year. Um, That's like around like January. So um, it's funny, like I say, like, yeah, our season ends in November. And anytime I tell someone that my off season's like a month long, they're like, that's not an off season. (laughs) But the off season doubles as the preseason too. And people are like, that is not a preseason. And I'm just like, well, yes, it is. Like in the tennis world, it is. So yeah, that's just kind of currently where I am. I'm at home right now. um, And I'm going to be, you know, heading out for for a tournament either tomorrow or Saturday, just kind of seeing where, um, where lists move in terms of like entry lists. Um, and, and yeah, just getting ready to roll for the next, like for the next month or so, and hopefully like finish strong. Nice. Awesome. Well, I do want to hear a little bit more about salt stick and how you guys started, but I also kind of just want to jump into like the meat of our topic. So let's start there. And even just hearing Danielle talk about her traveling. And I know like literally you were in Asia and then in California within a few hours. And then like you (laughs) are planning for Australia. So obviously when I hear about all this travel, that means a lot of hours on a plane. And um, a lot of times we don't want to drink water and stay hydrated because we don't want to have to get up and pee. And let's even start there. Traveling and hydration and what are some tips and tricks that we can learn just from you and Danielle? How have you implemented the use of salt stick into your travel so you can remain hydrated and get on a court the second you land? Yeah. And I mean, I can relate that to cycling, um, similar traveling internationally, especially. And it's mostly just about having that consistent game plan of not trying to do everything the day before the night before. But it's just that balanced approach of staying on top of your hydration and your electrolytes and also your nutrition. And that that also plays a huge role um, with your hydration is the like the foods you're eating. So if you're if you're on a plane and you know you're not going to have access to fruits and vegetables, 
um, packing those on the plane, eating them all before you go through customs and they take them from you. Um, just to, you know, have those like really hydrating foods um, to be to be helping with that also. Um, and then again, knowing that like you can become a little bit more dehydrated and your electrolyte balance can be thrown off when you're faced with jet lag or you just aren't sleeping as well. Um, and you're not getting that quality REM sleep. So supplementing a little bit every day um, prior to arriving at your destination. Um, those would be my top tips. Nice. Danielle, do you have any like best practices now since you are a seasoned pro traveling athlete? <laughs> What's your game plan? Yeah, so like, um, I totally agree with everything Jess said. And um, one thing I would add to that is like I the mentality I have with hydration is always like front load don't wait for um the feeling of dehydration to all of a sudden try to like implement everything so actually um I do have a ritual like before like a routine like before I get on a plane I do drink I do take like one salt stick and, um, you know, mix with like an electrolyte drink. So almost like if I'm going to go to practice, um, you know, before practice, I do front load as well. I'll have like my electrolyte mix and like a salt stick before I even like hit the court. I'm not waiting to start sweating before I, I take that in. Um, so, so I treat plane rides like, um, like a practice in a way, just because I you know, I don't want to show up to the plane dehydrated already. So that's like one one travel tip. And um, the other thing I do pretty consistently is I take a salt stick uh, uh, plus, a cap plus uh, before like my matches. It's got a little like caffeine kick to it. And also it's just constantly front loading before, before I hit the court too. So um, in terms of yeah, hydration, those are, those are kind of like my tidbits. I also do... Um, I try to, even though the restroom is like inconvenient, I try to get around like 32 ounces of water, um, especially on long plane rides. If it's like a three hour plane ride, maybe I don't get the full 32 mm -hmm. in, but like for sure, like if I'm taking a long, you know, a long haul trip to like, you know, Europe or Japan, at least 32 ounces and I'm tiny too. So <laughs> like, you know, even bigger you know, bigger, taller people should probably take in a little bit more. But yeah, like 32 ounces, hopefully more, but I at least try to get that in for myself. Nice. Um, before we go any further, let's have Jess explain the lineup of salt stick products, because I know there's several products and it might be a little confusing. We're going to talk about some of the different ways that we can use all of them. So maybe you can give us a quick rundown. Yeah. So just in a quick background on salt stick. The, the products are formulated to resemble or to mirror the electrolytes that are lost in sweat. And that's what makes us stand out is that there's a specific ratio of sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. The last two often you don't hear as much about um, that are lost in your sweat. So we have three product lines and they all mirror that ratio that I'm talking about. And so I think, Danielle, you're taking the capsules um, mm -hmm. You mentioned our, is your go-to. So that's our original and most potent form is the capsule. Um, it packs the biggest punch. And then the Caps Plus is the one with the added caffeine. Uh, we have a newer line called the Fast Chew. And it's not actually like a gummy chew. It's more like a sweet tart. And similar concept, they're smaller, so it's more like microdosing and um, really having to stay on top of that. But you chew them and they're absorbed the fastest because they're absorbed through the tissue in your mouth immediately. So you actually don't need any water or drink to take those like you do with the capsule to swallow them. Those are my favorite because they're flavored and I am a big like, flavor person. Um, so that's the fast chew line. And then our other line is our new drink mix. So what's unique about our drink mix is it's not a calorie replacement. Again, it's focusing on what we do best, which is the electrolyte replenishment in that specific ratio. So, um, and again, it's got like a nice mild flavor and 
if you're big on flavor and you like the capsules, I think, Danielle, you mentioned having an electrolyte drink with a capsule sometimes to preload. Uh, that would be a good option. Nice. I'm also obsessed with the fast shoes. Like the new flavor, I'm, I like have some right here. I literally brought some just in case. The pina colada, <laughs> oh, oh <M-G>. yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> eh, yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> that one's very tropical. My favorite's the mixed berry. It, it's like I sometimes want to eat it like candy because I think it tastes so good. And I, I tell this story a lot. Uh, there's this 200 mile gravel race that I did. It's called Unbound. And I had 55 <laughs> of the fast shoes. I actually uh, like specifically plan to take it as it's meant to be prescribed like throughout the hour and I just stayed on top of it and I had a great day nice um, <laughs> so in no stomach irritation yeah so I think it's a testament to that product I have trouble swallowing a capsule during exercise I would use it more like you Danielle like pre and that's what's so great about having you know three different options That's awesome. And actually, I kind of want to bring us back. Obviously, you guys are both elite athletes. I'm just a regular person who likes to do athletic things. But I have busy days where it was like yesterday, I went for a run, I had some time on the court, I had a softball game at night. And I am definitely someone that struggles with hydration. I have my whole life. I've always been like a heavy sweater. So no matter... (laughs) No matter what I'm doing, I'm usually like dripping perspiration. Um, So how, I mean, like, are these products going to be okay for someone like me to use, even if I'm not, you know, planning a five hour, you know, day at the courts kind of situation? And how do you recommend us average tennis players and athletes out there using your products? I, that, I mean, that's a great question. And I think it's just so important that first off that you view yourself as an athlete because you're moving like sometimes like my busiest work days as a business person are t- harder than like a hard day on the bike, you know? Um, so yeah, they're, for our brand specifically, I mentioned earlier that our parent brand is called Elite Active Nutrition and that's A-L-E-T-E. And we put a lot of thought into that. It stands for all athletes, meaning, you know, if you're out there and you're moving and you're an athlete, and our products are for you. It's just you would prescribe it to yourself it based on the recommendations. So maybe you're not doing a five hour bike ride. You're doing a 30 minute run. So you or you're not doing a two. You don't need 55 fast shoes for your run. <laughs> you might need two <laughs> to be feeling on top of your game, which is totally fine and way more cost effective for you. So. Yes, true. <laughs> Um, I do have a quick question because you said that you like they're like candy and they re- they're really good. Like I noticed the other day I was sitting at my desk and I had some on my desk and I'm like, I'm kind of sure. Um, sure. Can- <laughs> <laughs> She's like, don't do that. Um, just on an average day, like, you know, I- most average people, I think, go and get their workout in. Is it OK to just like have a couple or is it like I'm only taking these when I know I've got a lot of sweat coming out and I need to replenish my electrolytes? Yeah, I think it depends on who you are. If you specifically know that you have a condition where you have low blood pressure or you're hyponatremic naturally, which means that you lose a lot of sodium and electrolytes in your sweat, then you could be microdosing. But I think for the general population, especially if you're watching your sodium intake, um, I, I try not to eat them like candy. <laughs> Even though they are really good. <laughs> they are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about cross training as well for our sports. And as tennis players, a lot of us do cross train. And Danielle, I don't know if you feel this way, but based on your, you know, just following you on social and everything, I feel like you've been in the best shape of your life as a pro player this year for 2022. So I know you spend a lot of time off the court training. Talk to me a little bit about what you do to train and how you are so on top of your hydration. Yeah, like um, I I do feel as fit as I've ever been uh, this past year. And I think it's just been like a product of like great like workload management and also um you know I have a strength and conditioning coach that's been helping me out too and like we do like um you know a combination of 
uh, of like cycling or like stationary cycling and um, and also like, you know, road work too. And whether it's um, continuous runs or interval running. So we're pretty good at like mixing that up and not like getting too stuck on one workout. And then like we pair it with some strength, um, strength training in the gym, you know, weights, um, depending on how close we are to, to competition, like, uh, we'll, we'll vary like, you know, the reps, how many sets, you know, how heavy we're going. Um, but, uh, in terms of like, you know, hydration and stuff, like all those things need to be dialed in order to get the most out of your training too. And so like, um, I, I put like hydration and, and nutrition together. Um, so just like being a little bit more disciplined with my macros and my hydration in order to get the best out of my workouts, um, especially on my heavier days. Um, I'm, I'm front loading even like the night before. So, uh, that was kind of like an answer all over the place, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it, it's just like a combination of a lot of good stuff, um, cardio, in intervals and strength work, which is probably why you need a coach to help you like manage it too, or else like it's tough. Like sometimes if you just like wake up and you're like, oh, I'm in the mood for this, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just, you totally neglect, um, you totally ne- neglect one facet because tennis, it, it's a tough sport because it's anaerobic and aerobic at the same time. So you need to train like both things. Yes. And, um, there's so many, there's a lot of crossover actually between cycling and tennis. And whenever you're in the locker room with pros before a tournament, you always see them on a bike. So that's obviously, Mm -hmm. there is some crossover there. We see we're bringing you guys to your sports together. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I wanted to ask also uh, both you guys, what are some initial signs of dehydration and you can speak about this personally from what you notice from your body and also in a general aspect and then obviously you know a lot of us as athletes have all heard once you feel dehydrated you're like way past the point like Mm -hmm. you're you're kind of screwed so what what's the next step I feel dehydrated and so then I must do this Jess you want to start us out on that one Yeah, I would say generally, so you brought up like traveling earlier. So let's say traveling, traveling internationally, um, if constipation, (laughs) something that's like not too fun to talk about, but that's a, that would be like the first sign that um, probably dehydrated or craving sugar and then also not sleeping as well um, might cue to me, okay, um, you're a little bit off. Um, in general, I would say, you know, like the obvious ones when you're exercising, you're flushed and your mouth is dry. But I think if you start to maybe get like a headache or you start to feel tired or dizzy um, or even cranky, um, knowing that whether it's electrolytes or eating something, there is is probably a sign that you're off. Danielle, do you have any signs that like trigger you like, oh, shoot, I'm not as hydrated as I thought? I know you're so disciplined with your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would I would say like a lot of those signs that Jess mentioned, like I think like the first one that I noticed is like <clears throat> maybe not quite a headache, but like this like tension, like, you know, you know, up here in my in like my front in the front of my head or like my brain. I could, I could tell I'm not as clear. Mm -hmm. And so like, those are like signs for me. Another one, I mean, another one people talk about is like your pee color. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let me think. Um, Also, like I notice sometimes it's nutrition, sometimes it's hydration, but when I'm feeling a little sluggish on the court, um, you know, I'm small. So like I I use my speed and my movement a lot. So I, if I feel like I don't have that like extra oomph, like in my first step, that extra explosiveness, it's also kind of like a sign, like, Hmm, like maybe something's not going, um, something's not like, right. Uh, so like I'll, I'll tie into like maybe uh, my my hydration, maybe a f- little bit more carbs to like retain the hydration as well. Uh, so yeah, yeah, um, th- those are those are my signs. And also another one is like chapped lips. Like I notice yeah. like when I'm feeling like dry here, mm-hmm. like I think it's it's also like a, a huge sign for me that like I'm not I'm not taking in enough. 
So let's say uh, you're experiencing these symptoms and you're on the court, you're in the middle of a practice or you're in the middle of a match, even worse. What from both you guys, Jess can give us what might be best practice and Danielle, maybe like how you've combated this in the past. So what is the first thing that you need to do, especially using the salt stick products? Yeah. So I've actually, since I started using the fast chews, um, and I mentioned that is, you know, fast, it's a going to absorb right into your bloodstream through your mouth and get you going. I've watched people turn around in like 60 seconds from chewing those and notice it immediately. So I would say like, if you have a salt stick product with you, get that in. If it's a capsule, it's going to be working in, you know, five to 10 minutes. Um, The reason why I bring up those two first is often when you get to that point of like, you're not feeling great. Sometimes the idea of drinking or eating something first is makes it even harder. And that's often how that perpetuates to the point of not feeling good. Um, so if you're just thirsty and you're out there and you're hot and you, you need the liquid, then, you know, go for the, the drink mix. But I think sometimes it can be a little bit easier not to have to drink something um, and to have the, that other option. But yeah, it's mostly just like, start replenishing as quickly as you can. Danielle, have you had any personal experiences where you're like, "Uh uh-oh, and just start? Yeah, I was was actually going to ask Jess if this was good practice. I double up like right away. Um, You know, if if I'm already like starting to feel it come on, that means like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm a little bit behind. So I might even like, of course, I'll put, I'll, I'll um, take one, one salt stick, but like depending on like, okay, if it's, if we're in Texas and it's 90 degrees outside and I'm feeling it, I'll double up like right there. But if we're like in San Diego and it's 70 degrees, I'll be like, okay, I'm kind of starting to feel it. You know, I'm, I'm going to take an, take an extra one right here. I'll just take one. But yeah, it just depends on the conditions. If I feel like, yeah, it's, it, it's tough conditions and it's hot and humid outside, for sure, I'll, I'll double up. But I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe you can, you can give me a better, you know, better suggestion or better... Better way to think about it, Jess. No, I mean, that's, you're thinking about it, right? And um, our sweat does change depending on, you know, the environment we're in. And then if it's super humid, right? So sweat is meant to cool you. So it, the water comes to your skin and it evaporates. And when it's humid, that process is interrupted um, because it's harder. It's not dry enough for that to evaporate off your skin. Um, But when you're in those really hot and humid environments, um, your sweat rate might increase. So you might be losing double the amount of electrolytes in an hour that versus like where you would somewhere cool. So doubling down um, would be a smart thing to do. And then especially if it's working for you, if it's not, then I would say, let's talk about addressing how to, to make it work better. Um, Have you ever had a, a sweat rate test? No, I actually really want to do one just just so I can have numbers, like just to see if I'm like, yeah, if I'm doing things, if I'm putting in enough. I, I think that it's so interesting if you're not having any issues, like, but it, it would still be fun to know and especially to watch if you did like an acclimation period somewhere hot and humid to see how more efficient you become. Um Let's talk to your coach. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, <laughs> let's get this going. I think that would be awesome. And Danielle's so dialed in in her regiment. This sounds right up your alley, Danielle. <laughs> it, it, it is. Like, I actually have a friend I go running with, and, like, he sent me a link on, you know, doing a sweat test. And I'd be like, oh, I've been wanting to do this for years. I just, like, have never, like, gotten around to, to do it because normally we'll get together and – We'll run like a 10K and I'll be like, this would be perfect for our run. Like we could go like see see how it works out. Um, but but yeah, you should make like a bundle, a salt stick bundle with like a sweat <laughs> test. And then and then you can prescribe people like how much they should take. <laughs> yeah, what exactly <laughs> what exactly does it entail for everyone that might not know? So it's just looking at like the amount of sweat you're losing over a period of time. And there's different ways to do it. And there's also ways that you can do it where you put these little coils on your skin and then you can actually run like a chemical assay and see what you're losing in your sweat. So um, you can see like sodium, like the amount that you're losing. And then, like I said, doing a test 
before an acclimation block and after, like if you ever go somewhere with high heat and humidity and watching how that changes and how you can become more efficient by reabsorbing those electrolytes. Um, so there, there's like a very like lab specific way that if you work with a coach and a physiologist that we could do it like in a lab setting, or you could do it in like a home way where you're actually collecting your pee. How about those, like, um, those patches that, that was like the, I think that was the link that my friend sent me. Like how accurate are those like patches for like your sweat rate? That's a good question. Um, I would say the most important thing would be to use the same patch across a period Mm -hmm. of time. And, and rather than using like a different brand, I'd have to look at the validity. I'm sure there, the validity varies across brands, but if you're using the same one always, then that would be the best way to use it. I love talking about sweat because as I mentioned, <laughs> I'm the one that like runs three miles and is like ringing out my headband. Um, can we like chat a little bit, maybe like debunk like you know, you're not a worse athlete if you sweat more, or maybe, maybe I am, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> that like individual sweat, different amounts. Like I can go to the gym and like sweat a pool. And one of my other friends that I work with, um, she can go to the gym and like maybe never sweat. And like, that's maybe just explain how that happens or what that even means. Well, again, it varies depending on where you grew up. Normally, your sweat ducts, like the number of sweat ducts you have are developed in the first couple years of your life. So sometimes if you grow up in a, if you're born and spend those first two years of your life in a hot and humid place, that can determine it. It can be your size and it can totally be genetics too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and it doesn't mean, I mean, sweating is a sign of your efficiency and your ability to cool yourself. So it can kind of go either ways. Like if you start sweating profusely immediately, like how, like me, I'm like you and I'm wringing it out. Um, I think I'm a super efficient at cooling myself. It can also mean like on the other end of the spectrum, um, if you're trying to like get into shape or starting your training, um, and you're less efficient, that's just a sign of like, you're hot, <laughs> your yeah. body like, really needs to cool down. Um, but also like, uh, sweat in itself, it, you never know what that, the ratio of the electrolytes are in your sweat. And an example I'll use is like the con- the concentration. My boyfriend recently, and I feel like a failure because I'm thinking, how does he not know this after years and years of me drilling into him what salt stick does? He said to me the other day, he said, my kits, that's what we call our cycling gear. They're so salty. I'm going to stop eating that salt stick. <laughs> no, that's that's not how it works. The problem is, is that you're drinking two bottles of water on a five hour ride. So the concentration of your sweat is like so <laughs> thick. And if you stop taking the salt stick, you're probably going to pass out and cramp. And so he like went out on one ride and he's like, I drink six bottles of water today and I didn't have any of that weird salt on my kit. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe I wasn't doing a good job of explaining this to you. But again, it's that, you know, that concentration. So that's something if you notice that you are that really like salty sweater and you can see it on your skin or on your clothing, that probably means that you w- would need to take more electrolyte replenishment when you're exercising. And then something that comes up often too, and you know, we've heard, we hear all these things and it's like trying to figure out what's the truth, but talk to me a little bit about salt, like straight up salt versus electrolytes. Right. So salt is sodium and chloride together. So that's why if you notice, if you look at the ingredient on the salt stick caps, it's sodium chloride. So like table salt is just the, those, those two elements together. Sodium in itself is an important nutrient. Um, and that's why, I mean, so many things happen when you're deficient. (laughs) So that's a simple answer. Um, and what about, can you, uh, you already hit on it, but I I think it's super important to talk about how salt stick differs from other, let's say, I don't even call them electrolytes, hydration drinks, <laughs> nutrition drinks, other things that people might be grabbing and why why it's different. We, well, we call it electrolyte replenishment specifically. 
Um, although with the drink mix, uh, there's that added benefit of the hydration because you're obviously mixing it with water. Um, and again, it's about, so I think two of the electrolytes that we don't touch on a lot, lost in sweat, are magnesium and calcium. Um, both very important for things like sleep, recovery, bone density, bone health, and um, those are also lost through your sweat. And it seems a little bit odd to think about, but how I first became interested in electrolyte replenishment was in grad school. Uh, my focus, my research focus was actually looking at calcium lost in sweat and how that impacted bone density in elite cyclists. And the what we were finding is that as as I mentioned earlier, one of the heat adaptations that you, uh, when you're acclimating to a hot and humid environment that you see is that you actually become more efficient. And one of those ways is reabsorbing sodium and potassium. So you're not losing it all through your sweat. With calcium, we find that that, so that system doesn't work the same way. And if you're a tennis player, you're getting a lot more impact. So you're getting that healthy impact to your bones. Um, but as a cyclist, you don't get that as much. You're just constantly going. So that's why we were focusing on cycling. But the point being is that if you're losing that and you want to be able to replace it um, as well. And so it's that specific ratio is what makes us stand out. So the sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And there's also, uh, we put vitamin D into the products also to help with that um, absorption process. So if you look at other products, it may not have all of those key electrolytes or especially with like sports drinks, I'm not gonna call anyone out specifically, but it's a lot of sugar. Um, and if you're doing the amount of activity that like Danielle and I are doing over a period of time, you might want to be getting your calories from other food sources or real food and not getting that in when you're trying to replace your electrolytes. Yeah. And even from the, the non-professional athlete, I love the capsules because they don't have added sugar or anything like that. So as someone that might be trying to like be very specific about what, like, I'm not looking for calories for this, but I still want to be hydrated. That's, I think that's an awesome, awesome point too. Definitely. What about some, we've always get these like things like, oh, if you're cramping, I, I've, these are the ones that I've heard. So you can talk to me and maybe through these, um, mustard, pickle juice, apple cider vinegar, Coconut water yeah. and bananas. Those are the main ones that I always hear. Do you guys have any experiences or stories or? I want to hear from Danielle first. <laughs> she was like, Bleh. Litter this conversation mustard, with my opinion. Mustard. <laughs> mustard. I've never heard of that, nor will I try it. If I've seen I'm people starting. just like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't do a mustard flavored fast chew. No, I gosh, I'd hope not. <laughs> don't don't send the trial over here, please. <laughs> but like, I, I won't I won't fill out the survey. <laughs> Na. Yeah. Um. I've heard I've heard the pickle juice thing, but I'm not really on board just because like it doesn't taste great. Um. I rather take a pill or like yeah take take an electrolyte drink. Um, what was the other one that coconut, coconut water? I've heard that too, but I don't know. For some reason, coconut water does not agree with my stomach. I don't know if it's just a me thing or, you know, I was, I remember playing a tournament in Hawaii and everyone's like, yeah, drink coconut water, stay hydrated. It's hot here. And I was just like, okay, I tried it. And I was like, never again. It's terrible. <laughs> it hurt my tummy. So, um, I'd stick to the pills, but that's, that's me, the salt pills. The apple cider vinegar is another one that had recently oh, oh, come. Yes. No. There's a tennis no. player that was <laughs> pushing it for really? a minute. Yeah. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. You do that? I When I think of apple cider vinegar, I think of like spraying my barbecue with it <laughs> or like making buttermilk, not hydration, <laughs> but like may, may, maybe, maybe, maybe Jess knows better. Like I, I've never... It's just like, oh, man, like, I feel dehydrated. Let me have some apple cider vinegar. <laughs> vinegar. Like, that sounds like... Gross. I know. sounds like an interesting idea. Okay, first off, total foodie nerd out <laughs> moment that you know how to make buttermilk. 
I oh, love that. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's that's what I think about. I go like I put that to make buttermilk. Like, what? so what would I do? <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip: if if you ever have a recipe that calls for buttermilk and you don't have it, but you have milk, you just add acid to it. So vinegar, lemon, yep. boom, there mm-hmm. you go, buttermilk homemade. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Let's break down the bananas and the uh, coconut water are loaded with potassium. It's too much potassium. It's the wrong ratio. Uh-huh. It's it's literally like showing why this ratio in our products is so important. And one theory is muscle contraction is caused by these little tiny sodium potassium pumps, like at the cellular level. And if that gets messed up, you could still cramp. So you could be downing coconut water. And it's similar to my experience when I tried to have all those gels on the bike. And you actually, you're going to be pulling water into your gut to help digest and absorb that. And it's probably why you got a sore stomach. So it was probably just like the wrong ratio. Yeah, I felt so bloated after mm-hmm. drinking coconut water. And even That's why. like, yeah, it's like so trendy to drink it too. So like, you know, different like events or like social events you go to, they have coconut water. I'm just like, I'm gonna stay away. No, like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. no thanks. It is really trendy because it's like, it seems natural, but yeah. it's, it's the wrong way. It's the wrong way to replenish if you really want to mm-hmm. put back in exactly what you're losing. Same with the bananas. So I think... I'm not 100% with, sure with the vinegar. The The pickle juice obviously is going to have a ton of sodium in it. But I think what, so there's a lot of really cool research out now about the neural connection with cramping. And so I think the theory with the mustard and the apple cider vinegar is, is that it causes a reaction that eases cramping, like a neural reaction that eases cramping. Um, so those like spicy, potent, um, flavors, I would consider, I guess, apple cider, potent, spicy, um, that, that it's basically just that neural reaction of easing the cramps. And I do know I have a teammate who is also a professional sky runner named Hillary Allen, and she's big on this neural reaction, probably because she runs hundred mile races in the mountains by herself. So (laughs) That's Anything crazy. to make yourself feel better at that point, <laughs> right? Oh but she goodness. she swears by this. I'm like you where, Danielle, where like the apple cider in my stomach and in my taste buds is so just like not going to work for me. Even if it eases, eases cramps, I'm not going for the mustard. I'm sorry. It's not- <laughs> I've literally seen people like open packets and like... Te- through the teeth. Yeah. Um, no, that was That's good because, you know, everyone's like, oh, I have I have the answer. Um, salt stick of what might be the answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. And it doesn't taste horrible <laughs> or hurt your stomach. <laughs> um, also, another myth or I think it's a myth because I've like I've gone through my own hydration struggles. But um, the more water you drink, the more hydrated you are. Can you talk, can maybe you can debunk that or you can say like, no, that's true. (laughs) Well, if you're looking at hydration, um, purely as the concentration of electrolytes that you're replacing, which is how I would look at it. It's like that example I gave with Sam and his kits. Um, you could only be drinking water and you're not going to replace your electrolytes. So eventually you're not going to feel well and, you're probably going to cramp um, and need to take in electrolytes. I'm not sure if I'm totally answering your question. No, but. <laughs> that, I, I have a personal experience where I was, I did a hydration kind of test and it showed that I run dehydrated essentially. And so I spent a week focusing on drinking more water, more water, more water, more water, more water. And when I went back and I was still working out and all that, and when I went back into the test, it showed I was even more dehydrated <laughs> because mm, I yeah. essentially didn't have any electrolytes keeping any of the water. I wasn't, I wasn't, there was like no yeah. water in me. I just sweat it all out. <laughs> You're just diluting everything. Yes. I yeah. know. It was a struggle. So Danielle, do you have any more questions for Jess? She's got like so much good information for us. Hmm. What's your favorite um, drink mix? Like the salt stick drink mix. I've only had like the lemon lime so far. 
And what's like, what's your like electrolyte stack before you start, like before you start your workouts? I think the lemon lime is my favorite. I also really like the tropical mango. I feel like it's a little bit more like of a robust flavor. So I'm a big, like, I just try to maintain consistency days beforehand. Um, and I don't do a ton of preloading. I'll maybe take like two fast shoes on the start line. I think, and this was a question I actually had for you. I think a lot about like, how am I going to get to everything that I need when I'm in a bike race, especially like a gravel race where it's bumpy and there's a lot of people around me. And so I put a lot of thought into like those steps of like, how am I going to actually get to those electrolytes? And I'm curious in a tennis match, and because I've never paid attention, you you wouldn't be able to be like, serve oh fast you <laughs> right? it's, on, it's on the changeovers like that's what I do that's what you and do so, yeah and like um I, I'm pretty like methodical about this like I prepare like my drinks before I go out uh in in like moderate temperatures between like 70 80 degrees I'm trying to take one capsule every uh I, I would say like 40 minutes mm -hmm. and so like that's that's kind of like how I stay on top of it um in hotter conditions maybe every 30 and and I and I've like learned this because my boyfriend did triathlon and like I have a lot of friends who are in like the running world too and I've like really um dialed in you know these things more than more than some other tennis players just because I'm like just so curious like with how how you guys manage it too and like I know like for you guys it's like tough to like pack all these things especially for like such a long like event and so I was thinking like, well, actually in a, t in a tennis match, it's quite easy because I get to go to my bag. Like yeah. I get to carry a big bag on court. I could bring all my nutrition with me. That's like all in my control. So I don't even have to worry about, you know, how many am I going to, how many am I going to have? I just have the whole bottle there. But I, I do, I try to stay mindful with like, with the timing too. And like, you know, same, same with the way like I eat. I try to have like at least 25 grams of carbs, like I have bars, 25 grams of carbs, at least like every, every like 40 minutes if I'm playing like a match. And I already like loaded like before too. Like I had, I started like an, like an hour before the start of the match. I had like 50 grams of carbs before I started my match. So it's just like to keep me going, but like, it's a lot of like trial and error too, but compared to you guys, it's so easy for me to access my things just, just because like, if you think about it, like we get to sit down every, how how long would you say is two games, Michelle? Like five minutes? Yeah. I mean, if you're playing, it might be a little yeah. longer. I feel like you grind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Around like five, five minutes, like every five minutes you get a water break. Yeah. So yeah. it's just kind of like being aware and not like getting too caught up in the match where you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot my nutrition, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, for us, unless you have like outside support, sometimes you are relying on aid stations in races mm -hmm. and you don't know what what's going to be there. So then, yeah, but it, I'm not a huge, like, I think that calorie counting in general is really dangerous and counterproductive, except when you learn how to do it for performance. I think that's like exactly what you're talking about, knowing you're, you said you're smaller. I know like big guys who are trying to get a hundred grams of carbs per hour and they're carrying that for a nine hour long race. I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot to think about, but once you start to understand that and get it dialed, the benefit of how you feel on the days that you get it right, it's just like <laughs> glorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And like, I think like this is definitely something like the tennis world can like kind of can like work its way into the tennis world a little bit more. And this is like the crossover that I've seen like between like me and like my endurance athlete friends, like where like there can be a crossover because tennis matches are not like an hour long too. Normally like anything over an hour, you need to have like some sort of like nutrition to like keep you going. And, and tennis is like on the, you know, on the spectrum of like an hour and a half, two hour long event. Um, so yeah, I think there's definitely like a great crossover there. Well, and then even bringing it back to, let's say like your average USTA player, you were 
definitely mm-hmm. like maybe possibly playing two matches a day and those matches yeah. are still going to be at least an hour mm-hmm. like minimum of an hour it could be very hot conditions you might not have access to the best options um i also wanted just to explain a little bit about how you guys partner with these athletes because you work with a bunch of great tennis players sim- similar players that we work with too and i know all of these pros that are very like in tune with their body and their relationship with you know, their nutrition. But I also think that there is Danielle kind of just said, there's like a huge gap of players that don't have a go to hydration method and might be flying blind at tournaments. So talk about your partnership with pro athletes. Well, we have um, overall with the salt stick program, we have our sweater crew. Get it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm in that one. I feel like <laughs> it, our, our motto is good things come to those who sweat. <laughs> nice. So, and, and it's like a huge range of athletes and there's um, watch out for the application process or um, the I think we've already passed it for this year. Our our social media manager and our marketing manager, Noah, um, kind of introduced me to Danielle and he works more specifically with the sweater crew athletes. But it just gives you um, sort of like the, it gives a discount. It gives you product and swag throughout the year, education on our products. Um, and then we do like a lot of fun partnerships where if you're going to a big event or you're a sponsored or pro athlete, like we can expand on that partnership. Um, we love sharing, having our pros and our ambassadors share product with new people. Um, I think that's the best way is just for someone to try it. And like I've mentioned, giving out the fast shoes recently and working immediately. Um, the, the products speak for themselves. It's just more about letting people know who we are because we, you know, consider ourselves still a relatively small brand. And um, yeah. All my friends know who you guys are. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. job. <laughs> well, well, no, like they the already knew. They already knew. Oh, I mean, like my endurance athlete hmm. friends. Like I'm as soon as like I kind of molded my way into that group of friends they're like oh do you have any sponsors i'm like yeah sponsor tennis warehouse k-swiss salt stick they're like you're sponsored by salt, salt stick? stick they couldn't believe it and I was, I was like why you guys use it and i didn't know any better like yeah we live on that stuff <laughs> that's amazing you know how i first found out about salt stick actually was i used to be a private chef And I cooked for a bike company called Cervelo for a really long time. And I went to Kona for Ironman Worlds five years in a row. And I can tell you that working that event as a chef for two weeks, I think is harder than racing it. I don't know because I've never raced it, but I'm just going to put that out there. (laughs) And they, they used to bring the salt stick capsules. And I like when you're cooking like that, Sometimes you just don't have time to drink like enough. And I started using those as a chef before I started using them as an oh, athlete. Okay. Wow. Oh, wow. So I think it's like there's many uses, but back to your friends, make sure they, I don't know if you've introduced them to Noah, but oh, span, no, not- span our sweater through. <laughs> Oh, no, not yet. I mean, like, they're they're just, like, kind of, like, weekend warrior friends. Like, they don't take it, like, too seriously. But, yeah, they've been they've been using your product for, yeah, even before I met my boyfriend. So you're well known in our community. Salt Stick. <laughs> That's awesome. Everybody knows, everyone knows about Salt Stick. I love it. I think I was the last person to know, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. And I am kind of doing this a little backwards of how I said it would, but... Can you give us a little bit of info on how Salt Stick came to be as a brand and who the founder is? Yeah, so the original founder is Jonathan Toker, and his background um, is in chemistry, and he was an elite trail runner and triathlete. And I think, so he just combined those two backgrounds of understanding, like, as an athlete under this extreme demand and stress and looking at what existed in the market and saying like, there is not one brand that has this specific ratio. And so he, he created that. And like I said, once you try it, you know, you can tell the difference and that it works. That's awesome. 
Well, I feel like we've just been kind of having a chill conversation as if we just all met and we're like talking athlete stories, which is always the best way to have these conversations. But I know I've taken up a bunch of your guys' time. Do you guys have any other questions for each other? Or we'll have to connect you guys and make sure that you guys are like sharing stories and contacts and all that. I want to know, are all tennis courts designed so the sun is like in the middle or do you go where like you're at a disadvantage where like you're facing the sun and your opponent isn't? Supposedly there shouldn't be like an advantage, but certain courts are face north, south, just because they could fit the court in that way. But it shouldn't be like that. I don't know, Michelle, you have anything to add to that? No, you got it. Essentially, they're all supposed to face the same way. But if you go to a club, you'll see six courts like this and then two courts like that because they have. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, that normally if you if you play on a court and the sun is like straight in your eyes at around like 2 p.m., it just means that whoever developed the court was like, we're going to put a court here because we could fit it here. Not because it's supposed to face this way. It's because we can fit it here. But luckily in tennis, you're switching sides. So everything should mm-hmm. essentially be equal of wind, oh, yeah, sun, all of yeah. the above. Yeah. Or you can just play indoors like at Tennis Warehouse and we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's right? the best. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Get, let me have you both plug your own perspective stuff, whether it's Salt Sticks website or even Jess, if you want to plug your Instagram and same Danielle, just go ahead and give us all the plugs for Salt Stick and your own personal stuff. Okay. So my Instagram is at Jess Sarah and my last name is spelled C-E-R-R-A, um, pronounced Sarah. Uh, Salt Stick is at Salt Stick. Um, you can also check out Joe J Bar at, at Joe J Bar, J-O-J-E-B-A-R. And our other brand, Bonk Breaker, um, is part of our platform. So you can check out Bonk Breaker at Bonk Breaker. Which, like, that's a whole separate podcast. I don't think we're bringing them into Tennis Warehouse. But I work next to the running guys, and they just had the root beer Bonk Breakers. They're so good. <laughs> yeah. The Bonk Breaker chews are amazing. <laughs> I feel like, yes, we'll leave that for the endurance athletes. Or Danielle, you probably could get your carbs that way too. And I know Juju loves them. Yes, yes. We love to just like dabble in like the running world just to see like (laughs) what kind of healthy or like, would you say healthy carbs or like what kind of manageable carbs you can take like during activity? Because you can't just be eating like muffins on the changeover, right? You (laughs) have to. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) You can't just be eating like... Yeah, you can't be just eating yeah. like wheat toast on the changeover. You have to eat something yeah. like proper for like activity. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I can send you some bonk breaker chews if you want to, if you want to give them a try. Okay. Yeah. I'll try anything. <laughs> Danielle, plug yourself. I can send you some I, JoJ bars too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a picky bar athlete. <laughs> No. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to bring it up, but she has her own. She has her backhand oh, on a picky bar. Wait, <laughs> okay. where's my sh- where's my shameless plug here? My shameless plug. That's here what I, I was am. like, oh, sh- don't tell her. <laughs> we 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 won't tell them when you like JoJ better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but picky is good. I have never tried JoJ, but <laughs> I just like we- that Danielle's on it. <laughs> yeah. We bake our bars like a cookie, so they're oh, okay. different than any other type of bar. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll plug myself. I'm <laughs> the little giant on Instagram, and that's it. You can find me there for <laughs> nice. some for some fun videos, Always. especially with my dog. Always. And some tennis warehouse videos too. You Always. Know, <laughs> doing what I do. Cool. Well, you guys, thanks for joining. Um, This is a fun chat. There's like probably a part two, three, four and five that we could do if if we really want to schedule that and let Danielle take control of the questions. (laughs) I'm going to take a sweat test before. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. That would be awesome. (laughs) I think that would be so awesome. And knowing Danielle, she'll like video it and have a whole reel of her sweat testing and all that. So great. (laughs) <laughs> thanks you guys for joining and thanks to all our listeners listeners if you have any further questions about hydration or you want to learn more about salt steak we are carrying their new lineup on tennis warehouse we have a ton of the flavors we just got tons of samples and all the play testers were able to 
try them and we all definitely 100% love them. Pina Colada was a favorite. The salted, uh, the mixed berry, which we were calling salted blueberry. <laughs> and also <laughs> like the mango and the lime were also favorites amongst the playtest team. So great stuff and we highly recommend it. And yeah, see you guys next week. Happy hitting. Happy hitting.